Hello, everyone, and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below, and maybe they'll be in our new video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and let's get started. What's the silliest mistake you've seen a bad coworker make? Part 4. The colleague is a total mess. I literally don't know how to make a living because I handle 95% of their tasks. They are what I would call a Kevin slash A, but at this point, their ignorance feels a little too planned and weaponized. To give you some background, I work for an IT branch that handles off-network systems. A few months ago, I asked this person to look at a tower that had malfunctioned. While I acknowledge that not everyone is skilled in troubleshooting electronics, this episode makes me doubt some people's ability to survive. They call me, saying they think the motherboard's broken and the power won't turn on. I'm in charge of their former computer enclave, and they were fired for pure incompetence. How was the power supply tested, I wonder? They claim to have used two separate cords to plug the tower into the wall. I can assure you that this only serves to test the cord. I was surprised that I didn't break my nose because I facepalm so much. The first time, I really asked this person to repeat themselves twice, and I cringed when I had to ask the buying authority to repeat it in order to stop the request. Let's also mention that this incident happened during a period of extreme, expensive chip scarcity. Furthermore, I was already feeling the heat from having just placed an order for several tens of thousands of new gear. This person was aware that we were almost overspending. Even though this may not seem like the most stupid thing in the world, let me also add that they claim to have experience that would allow them to perform this task in their sleep and have certificates that I've been chastised for not possessing. The fact that this has been happening every week for the past one and a half years doesn't help either. Once more, I have no idea how they, one, continue to work, and two, continue to breathe, drive, and operate. I thought I'd share this for the amusement of the IT slash ET community, because I consider this to be a really low stupid point from this seriously incompetent person. Due to online orders and holiday demand, I worked a temporary to possibly long-term overnight position for a company experimenting with night shift for the first time. I've worked in retail in a new role and for a startup company. I've also worked nights and was hoping for something calmer and more leisurely than retail during the day. In contrast to the other hires, my manager pushed for a supervisor position on me after hiring me almost immediately and telling me after the interview how much she liked my resume. With reluctance, I agreed. I took on the additional responsibility, even though I didn't want it because of the pay increase and the fact that it would look good on my resume should I decide to make the position permanent, or they did. Nevertheless, long story short, everything good has to come to an end. I eventually met my coworker, who I would be supervising after watching the training videos and working alone with a manager for a few shifts. He was cool at first, a little immature and not much younger than me. He had worked in retail before, so he was practically the new hire equivalent of the catfish. When he found out I was his boss, he immediately got serious and played the part for a day or so. However, after a few nights of working together without a manager or anybody else present, he would start chatting about politics and other unhealthy nonsense. As awful as it gets, basically, he would make offensive remarks about co-workers. During the Christmas season, we packed boxes of online orders while on break. He was decorating a small stocking, which all the employees were invited to decorate. I told him that I didn't celebrate, which is why I worked late on the holiday. He then used gold glitter glue to draw a Hebrew Star of David on the stocking, wrote my name underneath, and gave it to me. He found it to be very ingenious. Dude got fired for a lot of reasons, but he was also fired for racial harassment and discrimination. I told him exactly what was wrong, and that's what the training told us to do, but he ignored it. I had to tell my manager about this because she started to worry about his behavior after working with him alone one evening. 
My former co-worker and I were developing a system that offered IT support to several elderly care facilities. The reality is far different from the ideal, as anyone working in aged care will attest. Everyone should have readily available physical records in case IT systems fail. Though they can supposedly survive in the short term, they rely quite a bit on those systems to know dosage, times, and other information. We were upgrading the firmware on a redundant HA pair of core routers to address a bug that was not only occasionally causing problems, slowing down the WAN to an absurd degree, but also had the potential to break the device upon reboot, turning it into a brick. An HA pair is simply two of them with at least one connection to other devices, so in the event that one of the core routers fails, the other will continue to function without anyone noticing. The central device in your network that controls all network traffic is called the core router. The routers also have two separate power supplies, which are where the power cable is plugged in. These power supplies are supported by separate power rails, which resemble a long power board with more than 20 sockets. These power rails receive their power from various sources, occasionally even from different local grids, and are equipped with separate backup generators and UPSs. We complete them one at a time to keep everything operating because we have HA. During the process of updating router A, McGee, the jerk, asks, what's this button here? And presses it before I could say, don't touch. The entire rail's power was cut off when the circuit breaker test button was pressed. This is how we discovered that instead of plugging one power supply into rail A and one into rail B, the two routers power supplies were connected to power rail A. Both routers were dead when we turned them back on, router B due to the known bug and router A because it had been killed mid firmware upgrade. Finding a temporary router, setting it up, and getting them back up and running while we RMA'd the originals took a few hours. During one of those incident meetings, I inquired as to who had physically installed the routers and plugged them in so that we could check their other work for comparable problems. Found out it was Dip S. McGee. Not effing happy. I was hired by an acquaintance at a place he'd been working for a few months. After working there for a few months, I was given the responsibility of supervising a particular area which had a heated pool that required special maintenance. He felt that I had stolen his turn and that promotions were given out on a first come first serve basis, so he was not happy about this. I'd left work early on Friday afternoon because I had an event to attend. That Monday was my training day, and I was supposed to start my new job. The manager sends me a text message. They would have to pay for damages and lose a whole weekend to empty, fix, and replenish the entire pool area because the entire area had been flooded. Look how much he's effed up on their first day, was the caption on the video that this guy sent her, which is how she found out about it. The absurd thing is that the individual who flooded the area was captured on camera. The footage is unclear because it was taken during a period where there were only two staff members present in addition to the fact that I was not on the property. This man and another co-worker who was in another camera area. It was easy enough for a rocket scientist to figure out. When questioned, he denied it and was fired. Attempted to sue for wrongful termination wasn't successful for him. What kind of negative experience have you had with the Homeowners Association or Bad Neighbors? Part 4. Thus, last year, I relocated to a community with a somewhat relaxed HOA. There aren't any yearly fees, just a few limitations on constructing warehouses and raising cattle, etc. I've lived in and know of many neighborhoods with HOAs that are horror stories and should not belong in this subdivision, so that was the only reason I even thought about moving to one. It's all a small neighborhood, and I imagine most of the residents have served on the board one or two times. My neighbor asked me to join the board at the annual meeting last year. I reason that if they try to get out of control, at least I can voice my opinion. Then, presumably because they had all served as president before, they chose me to be president once more. Sure, let me have even more say. 
Then, during the past year, I've been learning about the history. Apparently, the previous president was a real a-hole who would visit people's homes and pick apart the meager trash regulations we have, including things the HOA has no authority to regulate, like where cars are parked or how flower beds are set up. Occasionally, a complaint would come in, sometimes from one of the other board members as well, and after reviewing the bylaws and covenants, I would usually have to gently remind the complainant that either the HOA had no say in the matter, or that it could be resolved with a quick text or phone call. Since their dogs were barking, some people really wanted me to place liens on their neighbors' homes. We had annual meetings a few days ago, and I presided over it as president. Having some experience presiding over public gatherings, I made an effort to keep things organized and civil, but you wouldn't believe some of these folks. Small, elderly women, who were quite charming when I first met them, became prickly old women who complained about their neighbors. Beaten up on me, the HOA, for not researching issues. One neighbor began to complain about other neighbors' junkyards and how he kept all of his cars in good condition simply because they had a few cars in their driveway. I received some praise after the meeting for supposedly maintaining order better than any president before me, but man, it was exhausting. Now that I wouldn't really allow them to constantly complain or pursue people I have no right to pursue, I would simply reply that's not within the purview of the HOA, you may want to contact your neighbor to discuss it with them, I feel like I have a target on my back with some people. Many in-the-middle people genuinely want to keep the neighborhood nice without interfering with neighbors, so I don't think there are enough of us. I know some people, myself included, would be happy if we just dissolve the HOA. However, I can see how even our small, loose HOA could become an FHOA if some of those individuals hold actual or perceived power. At 6 o'clock in the evening, our HOA demanded that all trash cans be brought in. Midweek, garbage arrived. Because of those annoying jobs that we had to pay for in order to pay for the house, there were times when H and I would not arrive home until 6.30 or later. Those of us who were in the predicament were not the only ones. When it was trash day, the homeowners association started sending a car around to the homes that did not have someone home before 6 o'clock. All of us were issued a series of fines, each of which included a timestamp on a photograph of our trash can placed on the curb, which displayed times such as 6.03 p.m. No one among us agreed to pay. After a few people went as representatives for all of us, there were 12 other homes, they caused a huge commotion and managed to get the rule changed to 10 o'clock. Due to the fact that the daytime temperatures in Phoenix would not drop below 110 degrees, we would also be subject to fines for having a brown yard during the middle of summer. People who had fake turf or a yard full of cacti were the only ones who were exempt from these fines to begin with. My HOA's board harassed my daughters and me nonstop, chasing after money that I didn't think I owed. The president, who has a criminal record as well, set the whole thing in motion. She is a very cunning person, and the board members quickly united against my family. Five feet from my front door, they wouldn't let me park in front of my condo or use the common areas. They towed my son's work trailer, my grandson's bike, and a few other cars. They said I was trespassing on my own property, so they called the police. Due to her disability, my daughter was not allowed to use the designated spot and was harassed via text when she attempted to do so. They would not provide me the bank records they said I owed them. They threatened my daughter, saying it was more than $5,000, and left a note in crayon stating it was only $3,000 on my door. I purchased a $3,185 certified check at the bank. Our monthly costs are $185. After giving the check to the treasurer, I got an email confirmation saying it would be added to our account and sent to the accountant, who, as I later discovered, did not exist at the time. We would also receive a statement. 
My daughter and I were lounging by the pool four days later. We were attempted to be ejected by the vice president and another at-large board member. We declined. Everything was captured on camera. The vice president returned with our certified check after going to the president's back patio. She returned it, stating that they just don't like me and that they were using money from the HOA savings to get me out. I hired a lawyer to draft a cease and desist to get the records we are legally entitled to. We did not get it. I did, however, take it to court. I provided all of the supporting documentation, including the intimidation, the denial of my request for payment, the deceit, and the actions taken against my disabled daughter. The HOA's acts were transparent to the court. The judge decided in my favor after they were shown to be the bullies that they are. Not only did I win the case, but the HOA's finances and procedures had to be thoroughly audited by the court as well. The results were startling. Numerous infractions of our community's bylaws, misappropriation of funds, and a lack of transparency. Every member of the board was made to answer for their deeds. In a huge win, the judge ordered that the current board be removed right away. A new board made of impartial and accountable members was chosen through a special election. The goal of this new board is to bring back respect, openness, and order in our neighborhood. Positive changes have already begun to occur. For example, my daughter's disability has been accommodated and I am once again able to access common areas. The dishonest, cunning board has been removed and justice has been done. Our community is genuinely cared for by the new board, which is striving to restore the lost harmony and trust. Now that the ordeal is finally over, we can move forward with hope and resolve. If you want to watch the part three, click the link here. We're very, very glad to see you all in the comments. Many, many thanks for your support.